that these three components, this triad between the pupil, the accommodative muscles, the ciliary body, and your medial erecti with with uh, conversion should all be tied together. Now the pupils are relaxing and the pupils are getting larger. What is a normal blink rate you should have like per minute? In, normally in conversation, uh, it's somewhere around 20 times a minute on average. Mm. But when you're on the screen, it drops down to four to five, se- four to five a minute. Whoa, that's like a five hundred percent decrease. Yeah, there's there's studies will report different amounts, but uh, that's where it's around. It's around four to five times a minute while you're staring at the screen. Again, okay. we're just we're hyper focused. Yes, and kind of like a sniper when they're focusing, they don't want to blink. Yep, that's how I think about it. They are you're hyper focused, and you don't want to you don't want to lose sight of what you're looking at. And then we notice again, people's eyelids don't come down all the way, and so your your eyelid will come down just to cover the pupil. So your brain thinks that you blinked, but you actually didn't fully close. Mm. And so the tear film isn't spreading evenly across the surface. And your oil glands that uh, release oil from the eyelid to help stabilize the tears, those oils aren't releasing as much. Mm. And so there is at least a theory, it's not as strong of evidence right now, but there's a theory that because our eyelids aren't closing all the way, the oil glands aren't pumping. And these oil glands are becoming clogged, they're not being used, so they're dying off. And so we do tend to see not just older adults who spend a lot of their career on a computer have bad functioning oil glands, but then even teenagers are starting to have dry eye disease and these glands dying off. And we think it's because of the heavy screen usage. Again, I, I mean, one plus one equals two <laughs> on that one. That feels... Again, I, I always have to point out that the research right now is not as... We don't have as robust research to confirm right. that. It's more of a theory, but uh, there's a lot of uh, dry eye specialists who who uh, at least anecdotally report, yeah, we think this is tied to it. Are you seeing, like in that vein, are you seeing already evolutionary changes, whether that's physically or just like use-wise with the eyes that has been happening over the past 10, 20 years mm-hmm. as a result of us being more, way more digitized? So I personally haven't seen that. It's also tough because evolution takes many, many generations. Mm-hmm. But I know uh, some pediatric specialists have been discussing uh, a phenomenon where they've noticed that kids who do have uh, exposure to tablets, iPads, and they spend a lot of time up close, Usually when you focus up close on an object, you not only converge your eyes, your eyes have to turn in, right, to keep it single. Your muscle inside has to flex and focus, but then your pupil also is tethered to this. And usually when you're up close, your pupils get smaller. Mm. And they're noticing for these kids who spend a lot of time up close, their pupils aren't getting smaller anymore. Somehow there's been a, a disconnection in neurologically Hey guys, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It's a huge, huge help. Thank you. That these three components, this triad between the pupil, the accommodative muscles, the ciliary body, and your medial erecti with with, uh, conversion should all be tied together. Now the pupils are relaxing and the pupils are getting larger. So they have like dilated pupils while they're looking up close. And we're not entirely sure like what the benefit of this would be or what the ramifications may be down the road. But I've had some pediatric specialists report that they're they're seeing a lot more of this now that they've never seen before. And that may be in some way, like especially with the kids that have the tablet in their hand right after birth or, you know, a year or two after birth, like we might end up seeing kids literally born with that as a result of... I'm not sure if it's going to pass. I, I, I personally don't think it, you know, like genetically that's going to pass down. Okay. Um, but I think this is, we're going into kind of like, uh, you know, this is totally like imagination thinking what's going to happen in the future. I do have um, thoughts of how our autonomic nervous system is influenced by device use and by um being in this constant state of like dopamine, I need to, I need to be entertained. I need to be in wow mode. Autonomic uh, nervous system. Yeah. So your fight or flight type of response, okay. right? Um, if you're being hunted by a bear, it's like do you either run mm-hmm. away, do you freeze, or mm-hmm. do you uh, fight back, right? And so when you're in sympathetic tone, you're 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 gonna fight 
you're you're going to do those sort of responses. And usually in sympathetic tone, your pupil gets larger. Mm. And when you like to see something, like that's why a lot of have you ever had a, a a professional poker player on or anything like that? Not on the podcast, no. But I played a lot of poker growing up. And people do what? They wear sunglasses while they're playing poker. Uh-huh. Why do they do that? Because their eyes dilate and they get excited. Exactly. Yeah, tell. And so when people are excited all the time, their pupils, they're getting the sympathetic response to pupils to dilate. And so I wonder if another issue with our our body's hormone regulation is being thrown off because we're kind of being put into this constant state of alarm, mm. this constant state of like, I need to be paying attention, I need to be uh, stressed out or cautious. Is this having an effect on our cortisol, is it affecting our stress levels? And, yes. and deeper, is it affecting our central nervous system to some degree? And, and is that changing us as, as a species? Again, this is, I, I'm not a specialist in this area. This is just kind of my fun thoughts where my brain goes late at night. You have to think about it. And again, it, like you said, it's gonna take decades to even really put that, that type of takeaway together because you have to see it develop over generations but it's a valid question just because the curve of how we're changing our day-to-day life has never moved as fast as it's moving right now yeah absolutely do you have i don't know like guidelines that you give parents for their kids or even for the parents by the way because everyone's fucking addicted to phones about how much they should be using their phones or what they should try to limit in their life to try to prevent some problems? Well, uh, I know the, like the American Academy of like pediatrics, they do have like guidelines for young kids on like, they shouldn't be on screens or for certain age groups, like avoid screens. Mm -hmm. If they are on screens, it's only for FaceTime. And if they're uh, on a screen, it's only for educational purposes at like an hour a day. They have certain guidelines up to like the age of six. Mm. Um, I personally just tell, again, the same thing. Let's get outside, take breaks every 30, 25, 30 minutes from, you know, near, near device stuff. Uh, those are usually kind of the recommendations that I, that I give. Um, you don't have kids yet, right? No, no. Um, have you thought about when you have kids, like what you were what your recommendations as a father are going to be? If I ever had kids, and I don't think I probably will, but if I did have kids, I would probably try to keep them away from phones and devices other than for educational purposes until they're kind of required. Because a lot of like kindergartens now are giving kids like iPads, mm. you know? So it's like, you're not going to keep them away from it. They That's have right. to learn and, and adapt and evolve and learn those skills too. Um, but uh, I would definitely try to put a limitation on it. Uh, I think as a young kid, I got way too sucked into video games, right? As like an addictive thing. Mm-hmm. And my parents you know, growing up at least are like, hey, you get one hour a day. You got to finish all of your chores. You can't do more than that. Uh, they did a good job until I was probably 14. And then they're like, he's mature enough. And I just played <laughs> nonstop. Uh, so I think there is a good, I wish I would have spent more time playing outside. I wish I would have been more adventurous to be like, hey, let's go try golf. Hey, let's go try biking. Hey, let's, uh, I think as a, as a parent, I would try to encourage like a weekly adventure. Like, hey, this weekend as a family, we're going to try something new that we've never done just to show kids that it's okay to try something new and be bad at something. Yeah. Because you're having fun. You're exploring life. I think that's something that maybe I didn't get as a young kid. We had kind of a family routine of, we went bowling and we'd go to the same restaurants. And and I felt like as I got into college and I had more freedom, I was like, oh my God, there's so many things I can do and try. Mm-hmm. And it's like, gosh, I wish I would have had more of those experiences at a younger age. And so that's- That's outside the box. I like that. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Uh, I think just getting out of the house and learning those life skills that's okay to suck at something at first. Yeah. Uh, but it's also great to just have those experiences and enjoy life. And um, I mean, how are you supposed to know that you know you're you're gonna like to play a certain sport unless you just try it? Hundred you know? percent. I also think it's gonna be interesting to see the kids that have been born since 2021 and are continuing to you know come <laughs> onto the earth who are not were not affected by the stoppage of COVID. 
oh. to see how they develop and what their relationship with inside versus outside is as they grow up. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, didn't matter what age you were, whether you were five years old or 13 years old, there was a, a stoppage in life that happened with COVID. Everyone went indoors, things went to the screens. They They went from like ubiquitous to fucking everything yeah you know it like a whole different level after when when covid happened such that for all ages but i'm focusing on the kids here and who were in development years the expectations of where you spend your day and how you spend your time completely changed and so now even if these kids that are being born since then are being born into a world of all screens and everything around them are they not going to be jaded by the idea of like, oh, I got used to the comfort of being inside when I was forced to be there versus are they going to be more thinking, you know, I want to go see what's out there. I want to explore. I want to yeah. do new fun things. That's going to be interesting to watch. Thank you guys for watching the episode. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and smash that like button on the video. They're both a huge, huge help. And if you would like to follow me on Instagram and X, those links are in my description below.